Hey everyone, Revan here, and welcome back to Feed the Beast University, where today we're going to be getting into some Batania. So sit back, enjoy the video, and let's see what we can't get done. Hey everyone, we are back and we are still obviously in Feed the Beast University. So the pack hasn't completely buggered out on me yet, but uh, yeah, I ended up uninstalling the pack, uh, trying a few different settings. And so far uh, I had it up uh, probably for a couple hours and I'm really, I'm getting a few smaller leg spikes here and there, but for the most part, it hasn't crashed. So. We're going to continue on and we're going to try some of the smaller mods uh, like Batania. Uh, Batania is not particularly a small mod, but at the same point in time, we shouldn't really have to do too much to get through it, at least the quest line in this pack. So before we start, I do want to get into a wireless crafting terminal, mainly because of the fact that we're going to be spending a decent amount of a decent amount of time outside. And I don't want to have to be running back inside every five minutes here. So where is it? Here it is. So the wireless crafting terminal from wireless crafting terminal two. So I think this is, I'm not sure if this one is normally added on by something called, uh, uh, from the mod that normally goes <laughs> along with applied energistics. And I can't remember the name of it right now. It's like either advanced energistics or something like that. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to inevitably have to make uh, one of these guys here and we're going to need one of you. We're going to need one of you. So let's see what we can make here. Do we have any of this? Nope. Uh, dense energy cell. I thought we had a recipe for this guy, but apparently we do not. So let's let's make one of these up real quick. All right. Looks like we got everything that we need. So let's order that guy up and then I think we also need uh, a wireless access point Let's see this guy wireless access point so we're gonna need another wireless receiver All right, we have our wireless access point and then I think we needed a security terminal as well to link everything up uh, so we're gonna need a 16k and an ME chest so let's just toss this guy in is a pattern because we have most of this stuff set up as pattern. I just don't feel like finding it all then crafting it all. So it's just going to be easier for us to, to make a pattern for it. That is like one of the, the really nice things about getting everything automated is the fact that like a lot of times, like in later games in the pack, you need to make like the pack kind of turns into like a craft a thon. So you have to make all of this stuff. So if as you're going you're adding a lot of the components to your automated recipes by the time you get to the end you can just essentially make a make a make a recipe for whatever it is that you want and chances are all your components are already going to be set on autocraft so once you just turn that in there you can you can pull it out relatively quickly so if we come over here to security terminal and we can craft that up real quick And let's see, where is our wireless wireless doohickey? It's got to be it's got to be done by now. Yep, there it is. We have our wireless terminal and we should probably actually be che <laughs> checking to see what applied energistics actually wants us to do here, because I have a feeling like we're just skipping every which way. Yeah, so wireless access point. It wants us to do this and have a wireless booster card. thought we have the access point right here. So I guess we just got to make some boosters. Oh, it wants the security terminal first. That's why it's not registering it. There we go. All right. So we have our security terminal, which gives us a biometric card, which we're not going to use because we're playing on solo. Uh, but if we were on a server, that way you could, you know, restrict it so that if anybody's close to your house, they're not going to get like signals crossed. Uh, we'll grab some more booster cards here. And then we need to make a wireless crafting terminal. And ooh, there's an all for one wireless universal, huh? Don't think we'll so much we'll, we'll make this, but I don't think we're going to make it today. I just I, I really want the crafting one so that we can we can access stuff while we're outside. So this guy is just going to be a Fluix Pearl and a crafting terminal. So we'll just grab our crafting and our Fluix. And we can just toss all this other stuff we we're using for recipes back up in here and we can just toss you in you in and you or is it like that 
See, that's saying that's a, that's a universal one right there. Huh. That was a bit weird. All right, so we have our wireless crafting terminal. Now we just need to toss our security terminal onto our network somewhere where we have have the, the open channels. So I'm going to say right here. And then we just toss our wireless charger up in there and it will link link to our system itself. And then we can just toss our access points up here and toss in our wireless booster card. So right now we have 16 block radius. Uh, if we toss one card in, we get 17. I d it's obviously 38 <laughs> doesn't take us up to like 50 or something like that. So it's not exactly a linear progression. The more you toss in, the, the wider it gets. But hopefully now we should actually have access to everything that we're going to need uh, close by. And what I was hoping to take up the first like two minutes of the episode uh, has inevitably taken up like the first 10. So we are now prepared to get into Botania. So Batania is really is going to be the first magic mod on the list. Um, I personally am not a huge fan of Batania. It's not so much that it doesn't work and it doesn't have cool things. It's just the functions and the way that Batania works just never really did it for me. Um, it's just not my cup of tea, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a good mod and lots of people love it. And I can understand why I just, you know, like I said, for me, not much. So we need to grab this pedal apocathery. So let's come into our wireless crafting terminal here. And do we have everything that we need? We're going to need some cobblestone slabs. There we go. And we'll just grab you out. And for now, I guess we can just do our little Batania setup over here. There we go. All right, so what's the next thing it wants us to make? It wants us, we got some pink flowers. It wants us to make a pure daisy. So we're gonna need to toss in white mystical petals and we should get a pure daisy from that. I thought there was supposed to be a catalyst for this. So it might be seeds. I think seeds are the kind of the basic, the basic catalyst for most of the Batania recipes. And if anybody else is playing this pack, I know that there's some type of like leaf blower or something in this pack that helps you get rid of all this uh, overgrowth. You can just write that down in the comments of what the heck that is, because I haven't been able to find it. <laughs> all right, so let's see if we can't get this figured out. So it says we needed four. So I think if we just click them in, or not click, but toss them in. Oh, that's four, or that's five. How do we get one out? All right. Yeah. And then we just need to toss in one seed here. There it is. So we have one pure daisy. I normally like doing two just because of the fact that you're usually going to want one for wood and you're going to want one, want one for living stone. So there it is. All right. So these guys, we can just set up really simply. These are just solely for the purpose of transferring uh or creating living rock and living wood so we just have to have them separated uh by two so one there space space and then we can put another one and then we can just grab some oh wrong one and grab some stone brick stone blocks and let's grab some oak logs and all of this stuff you can actually automate as well so like you could have breakers or whatever you want uh with a comparator on it, just kind of going through these guys if you really need a lot of them. But normally, you know, you just do a couple cycles of eight a piece and then you'll have more than enough for what you're actually going to need. So the next thing it wants us to do is make a mana pool, which we're actually going to need the living rock for. And then the mana spreader and the wand of the forest or realistically any type of wand uh, for these guys. And so we're just going to need the living rock and the living stone so we just have to wait for this to actually finish up all right so we need a mana pool easy day we just grab that mana spreader is just going to be any type of mystical flower gold and some treated wood the sticks are yeah <laughs> is what it is so we're going to need how many more of that two four more pieces of living wood and you can also hit these guys with your time in the bottle. So 
it's a if you need if you're really short on resources and you need something really quickly you can always just do that all right so let's make two more of these living sticks there we go and then we should have everything that we need for for this guy and we'll just use white petals because the color eh, i don't really care about it i i honestly i don't even know if the, the color actually does anything here all right then we need a runic altar this is going to be one of the crafting crafting grids that we actually need for a lot of the components for Batania. So runes are pretty much used in just about everything in Batania, and they all have to be made on the runic altar here. So we'll grab this guy and we're going to need a, hmm, a mana pool or a mana diamond. So we're going to have to actually get our mana pool set up here. So mana pools, uh, there's a couple different ways to get these guys filled up. I find the way that most people are going to, most people you're going to see use and the way that I like using is with the endo flame. So I don't know even how far into the pack that, oh, it's literally the first thing it wants you to make. So this is going to be brown, 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 red, and light gray. So we need two browns, a red and a light gray, and then a seed. There we go. We have our endo flame and this guy, all that this guy is really going to do is it is going to suck up anything on the ground. That's like coal or wood or anything that's flammable. And it is going to transfer that to uh, a mana pool or a spreader or something like that. So right now it doesn't appear to be doing anything. And I think that's because it actually needs a mana spreader. So the mana spreader, um, this gets hooked up to the mana spreader and the mana spreader is going to transfer it to the mana pool. So think of like this as kind of like a generator, but like only half of the generator. So, you know, this is a generator that needs to get hooked up to a certain type of power relay being the mana spreader. And then the mana spreader is sending that power to a reserve, which is going to be the mana pool. And then the mana pool is going to have two functions. One, it's going to fill stuff up or two, it's going to intake items. So the little like whitish box that you see is a mana tablet. It's like a portable uh, source of mana that you can have on you. And you can just toss those in a mana pool and they will fill up. I'm going to make a few more of these endo flames here. And then I'm also going to set up our mana spreader and I will bring you guys back once that is all is done. All right, we are pretty much set here. I'm just going to finish up setting these guys up over here. Uh, I, I'm not uh, I'm not an expert on Batania, mainly because the fact that you don't ever really use it. Um, but this is kind of the, the setup that I'm familiar with. So if I hold shift and then right click on the endo flame, I can then click it onto the spreader. And so I'm essentially just hooking all of these endo flames up to the spreader itself. So. Each one of them is going to be working to suck up a piece of this coal. They each have their own individual, uh, have their own individual status as well, as far as how much, uh, hmm. Okay, so it's hooked up, that's hooked up. It just has unknown status for whatever reason. Uh, but yeah, they have their own, their own like capacities that they can hold. So it, this mana spreader might be, uh, no, it's not full at all, so. We'll just click on them so that they're all not showing unknown. At least that way we know all know that they're working. But yeah, that they are working to fill up our mana pool here. So essentially, I just have a pressure plate, uh, which is being fed by a dropper and an open crate. Uh, the dropper is currently just being fed by a hopper and an iron chest. You can do like a, a furnace setup on top of this where you have trees just constantly being input into the furnace, making coal or charcoal, and then it spits that stuff out. Uh, but the pressure plate is going into a repeater, which is going into a redstone torch down here. And it's just a just a standard redstone torch uh, ladder going up into the dropper. So when that disappears down there, when it gets sucked up by the endo flames, uh, the redstone signal will go off and this will go on for a split second, which will trigger the dropper to drop one item down and, and so on and so forth. The problem, you, with these open crates is if you just take like an item conduit and lead it into there it's just going to constantly 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 uh cycle through so like i said there's a bunch of ways that you can set this up you can have an open crate with uh 
a, you know, a, a redstone conduit that's set to receive a redstone pulse and then have that being fed, you know, by a line of a redstone conduit going down and so on and so forth. But uh, this way is just simple. All right. And then the next thing we need to do is just grab a diamond or an ender pearl, wh whichever which one that we want. Uh, and we just got to drop this inside of our mana pool and that will transform it into this mana diamond which is what we actually need for the runic altar so we'll take this guy and tur turn him down and for now uh we'll just put him right there and then what we can do if we want is we can make another mana spreader there we go and just have that focused on the ground there and we can take the mana this mana pool and link it to the to the runic altar and then link the runic altar to the to the mana spreader there we go words and stuff and stuff and words all right so next thing we need to make is a planetary cluster bowl so in order for this uh we're gonna need five of the living rock in an x shape and then four lapis blocks uh in the sides so essentially the lapis blocks go in the center and it makes like a checkerboard pattern and then the plate actually goes on the top. But in order for that plate, we actually need to get into runes first. Uh, we also need to make a bunch of mana steel. I don't think we have uh, a lot of... Uh, wow, I can't click right now. I don't think we have a lot of mana steel. So let's just add all of our runes in here. But this is going to be the point in time where we have to essentially just kind of do a craft-a-thon here. So... Um, I need one of each of the runes. Uh, I don't think it actually, I'm not hundred percent sure if this, this recipe will actually utilize the runes. I know some of them do, but other ones just kind of use it as like a crafting catalyst. So we'll have to see here, but uh, I'm gonna have to make at least the rune of fire, air, mana, earth. And for each one of them, I'm gonna need, you know, things like mana powder and everything like that. So I'm gonna have to go through each one of these and make them up. Let me see if I can get the stuff that I need for the first one so I can at least show you the process of this. Okay, so we have everything that we need here. We have our five ingredients. Uh, I'm just gonna have to remember actually how to do this. All right, so we should just be able to right click them onto the altar itself. That's only showing four and five. And then we essentially just kind of have to wait for that X to fill up. Uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can see it very well, but there is like a little clock symbol on the rune itself that's uh, getting smaller and smaller, going kind of going around the clock here. And when that's done, we should just be able to hit this with a little bit of living rock. There we go. And our wand. And we get our rune of fire. So I have to do that four more times for each of the other runes, uh, each of them having separate recipes. Uh, so it is going to take me a minute. So I will be back as soon as that is done. All right, we are back and we have all of the runes. Uh, we two of all, two of everything. Some of them like the, the, the rune of mana only makes one. So I had to make two. Uh, yeah. And then it, I ended up making another setup just so that we have a little bit more mana. Cause I was ending up just sitting here having to wait for mana to be generated. And as also, as we progress in this mod, it's going to become more and more important that we have a good steady supply of mana to the point where uh, eventually we may end up, you know, having more mana pools set up with mana spreaders going into into separate ones. I think you can get something like a spark or something like that that will actually spread, you know, mana pools over like a three by three area or something like that. So you can have like one spark and then like nine pools underneath, but eh, we'll figure it out. All right, do we have everything that we need for this? I think we do. We have that and we can just make this guy over here. If I can dig a perfect three by three circle. So this is just, again, gonna be checkerboard pattern with our lapis on the sides. And then that goes on top. Sweet. And then it wants us to make two sparks so it says we connect this to a mana pool using sparks. So I think if we place a spark here and a spark on there. Okay, so according to the book, these guys are just pretty much supposed to automatically uh, link up. Okay, yeah, so this is linked to that. Uh, 
Yeah. So this mana spark just being over the mana pool is already going to be linked to the mana pool. And this being overneath this, uh, over this terra steel or terrestrial plate uh, is going to be linked to the plate itself. So and then these two sparks just link to them automatically linked to each other. So in order for us to make terra steel, uh, it's relatively expensive for mana from what I remember. And I think we just, yeah, we right click on that guy right there. And then I think it's just a matter of waiting. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think we have to hit that with anything, but we'll see. Cause I'm not seeing mana being transferred. So I'm just going to kind of give it a minute and see if it ends up doing its thing. All right. And oh, <laughs> that's not it. I think we also have to put a mana pearl and a mana diamond on top of there for it to actually start working. So that's why it wasn't working. And each piece of Terra steel, I believe is going to take about half of the mana pool. So we may have to sit here for a while for manage enough mana to generate to get this guy because this stuff is eh, pretty dang expensive <laughs> at the end of the day. So uh, I'm going to let that kind of form up and we'll bring you guys back as soon as it's collected all of the mana that it needs to and we are back so uh, a few things have changed uh not too much essentially i made a mana spreader and some more mana pools so i've essentially just been afking for oh i don't know i started recording in the morning and it's evening now so <laughs> just been kind of uh going through this uh trying to accumulate some mana because i want to make uh, I've already made two of the Terra Steel, but I want to make another one here just for you guys uh, because we are going to need a few for the crafting recipes that we have going here. So, all right, so we'll do this again. So Terra Steel is going to take each ingot of Terra Steel is going to take about half uh, of one of these mana pools here. Um, so when we have a large stockpile, it goes relatively quickly. And when we don't, it doesn't do so much good. <laughs> All right, so we get this mirror, which is kind of acts like one of these guys, uh, a mana tablet, apparently. I can link it to a mana pool and then wherever I am in the world, as long as that mana pool has mana in it, uh, it's supposed to work. I don't know. <laughs> it's about all that I know. Uh, the next thing we're working on is the elven portal and we need to make some of these uh, gateway cores. So we're going to need living wood and we needed uh this terra seal here so duh, duh, duh. do we not have any wood i thought we had some wood in there there we go and how many of these does it want me to make i think it was just one right yeah so it should just be derp and there we go so we have elven gateway core and i'm trying to remember how this guy gets set up i'm pretty sure i need to grab everything that's that's part of it first off i think that's a i think that's a good idea here so we have the three wood we have where did they go i had the mana pylons i thought oh no i still gotta make these guys because i needed needed the the natura pylons i believe yeah we needed a few more of the ingots for these guys and i think they just go out in front of the uh stuff and thing and stuff and thing the elven gateway there it is all right so let's see if we can't find this all right so in order to build the elfheim portal uh essentially we're gonna need eight uh, living wood we're gonna need the three of the the glowing wood and then the essentially the controller base down here uh, we're also going to need the mana pylons that we have. So we can actually just set this guy up like right there. That looks good to me. There we go. And then just for a little bit of effect, we'll put a torch on top. And also so we don't get mobs to spawn up there. But I'm going to be honest, I, ha <laughs> I haven't done much in the in the realm of uh, mob spawning. So, yeah, uh, we're also going to need two more mana pools. So let's grab these guys up real quick. One, two. And we can just put those right there. And then these two Natura Ponds are going to go right on top of there. But what we can do, uh, just to be sure, is we can take these two mana tablets. Uh, we can take this and make sure that it is... Oh, 
set to receive from a tablet and we'll just toss a tablet in there and then we'll do the same thing for this guy so that should drain those mana tablets and now if we click on the elven portal or the elfheim portal whatever it's called uh it should open up i don't think we can go through this like i don't think this takes us to another world i believe this is only used for uh getting stuff so like i just tossed in living wood and it gave me dream wood in return so certain certain crafting items that we're going to need to get through Batania, uh or if we wanted to utilize Batania a lot more we'd actually have to use this this elven port elfheim portal to do it. i'm going to keep calling it the elven portal that's what it's supposed to be all right so what does it want me to do next all right so we need to make an elven we get an elven mana spreader for this which I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't really know what the Elven Mana Spreader does. Oh, well, uh, let's just toss these guys back in here real quick just so we can get them filled up. Just make sure, yep, you're set to... Oh. There it is. And you input there. All right, so these guys have some stuff and things and things and stuff in them. But the next thing that we have to do is fight the Gaia Guardian. Uh, but before that, uh, I'm going to go on a little bit of a quest-a-thon or a craft-a-thon here. And I'm just going to kind of make my way through all of these flowers. Uh, and then I will show you guys what some of them do. Most of them are, i be honest with you, like all of these guys up here, uh, as far as I'm concerned, are, are, are pretty useless. Uh, one, they're kind of hard to get set up. Uh, and automate to keep running they do produce some of them will produce a heck of a lot more mana than the burnt than the ender flame but like this one you need to the burning jur it needs to be surrounded by lava so it's going to eat up that lava and then you need to pump out more lava but if you don't if you pump it out too quickly it'll eat it up but then it won't produce mana so it's like got to be timed perfectly uh so game lag and everything comes into play uh, and then you also need a never-ending supply of lava so it's a lot harder to make uh the explosion one you need to have tnt uh rose of the Ar oop, oop, rose of the arcane uh takes the experience so that could be useful if you had like an xp farm uh with an xp drain on it or something like that this one eats cake and so on and so forth so they're kind of you know we have to make them so we'll craft them up but we're not going to use them it's just even if it was like a very batania heavy pack i probably wouldn't use any of these guys and then we'll kind of go through what these flowers do down here. So let me uh, let me craft all these guys up. Welcome back. Uh, we do have a little bit of crafting to do, but I think we're going to save that for the end of the episode. I just want to toss all these items that we're going to need for it back in here. Uh, I did manage to craft up all of the flowers. Well, not all of the flowers. Um, we got the exploding ones and everything. The only one we didn't get... Um, is this last one the shulk me not because it says we need a spirit of gaia and i think possibly maybe we'll find out uh the only way to actually get that is from finding the the gaia guardian which we still have to do i think a couple times because i think the treasure trove comes from uh fighting essentially like a souped up gaia guardian so uh then we got most of the mob ones they yeah unless you're playing in like a magic specific ma mob mod pack uh you you're probably never gonna need these like uh, a flower that uh, feeds animals nearby, a vacuum hopper, so something that'll kind of work like an item collector. Blown away, it, it kind of acts like a fan or a pressure plate, not a pressure plate, but a vector plate, stuff like that. Uh, life aggregator and life imbuer. So the life aggregator will let us pick up spawners, kind of like a silk touch, if silk touch is uh, turned on in a pack for spawners. Uh, so this actually might be useful. And then the life imbuer just means that well we can actually read it uh it'll allow to spawn mobs when the player's not not anywhere nearby so so yeah we're gonna get to fighting the guy a guardian here pretty soon let me just toss the stuff that we're not gonna need we don't need 64 pure days this <laughs> is i'm sorry we just don't need that but i'm gonna sleep uh clear out a little bit area so that we can do this fight and then we'll uh we'll, we'll bring the pain all right, guys. Uh, sorry about that. That took a little bit longer than I was expecting. <laughs> I had to make a bunch more stuff. I had to make a bunch of Terra Steel. I had to make a bunch of the Elementium. Uh, I had to make some pylons, which we're about to set up. And hopefully I set this up correctly. But this is the layout for... Ooh, where are you? 
for the Gaia fight. So it took me a while because I couldn't find it. I actually had to look up uh, how I do this. And apparently you need to throw the Lexica Bata uh, Batania inside of the gate, the, the Alfheim gate, and it changes and it'll allow you to build this. So you just open it up, you click visualize, you click on a spot where you want to essentially place the beacon. And that's really all that there is to it. And then we just have, I believe we just have to right click the beacon with a piece of Terra steel. And this is going to initiate the, the first stage of the fight. I'm hoping this room will be big enough to do the entire thing, but uh, I'm not really sure. But all it really requires is a beacon. I don't know if it's gotta be lit. If it does, we are probably gonna have to break this block and put a piece of glass there. Uh, as hard as you try, the beacon will not accept it. You might be a good idea to check it. Okay, yep, we're gonna have to find a new area. That's a bummer. Well, let us try this again. We have the structure down. It says it's complete. Uh, we're, health is good. We just got to shift right click this guy. Um, yeah, sorry about the loud noise. Hopefully it's not too bad. Oh, he's right here. Ugh. I'm not sure if I can fly. I don't think I can fly in this. Where, oh. Come on, where'd you go? No! <laughs> what? I thought I'd be strong enough. I was wrong. All right, we are going to try this again. This time being a slight bit more prepared. Let's just remove that. That, that death never happened. So I now have strength to resistance to regen and a little bit of speed. So hopefully that will get me through this. And I have some apples. And I'm also going to try out my bow here just to see if this works. Yeah, flight does not work. Oh. Gapple, gapple, gapple. Just gotta watch her health. No! Oh. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Die! Docks! Alright, health is still good. We're doing good with the regen and everything. He's almost down. Oh, we did get withered. Our health is kind of going out. We just got to take out these guys now. Yes, drop into the world. <laughs> it's like makes you super slow too. Nope. Stop it. How long are you going to just sit up there and drop people down? I can't wait till the second one. I'm definitely probably going to have to like get better armor if I want to do the second one. Oh, we did it. We did it. We got it. Something's hurting us, but we got it. <laughs> what is, oh, we got wither three. Ooh, ah. All right. Ah, la, 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 la. Let me get rid of some of this trash. All right, well, now that that is done, that is good. But the thing we needed on it was the Gaia spirit. Now, I believe, what does this open up? Choice reward, uh, incense stick, strength two, regen, resistance. Um, hmm. Wow. Resistance two for 90 minutes. Regen two for 90 minutes. Well, we already got both, so I mean, might as well just take the, the regen. Uh, treasure trove. Fight the harder guardian of Gaia. The harder guardian of Gaia has much harder battle and drops her more loot, including Dice of Fate, which can spawn one of six unique, super useful items. To summon it, click a Gaia ingot on the beacon in your fighting area. So what is a Gaia ingot? So we need four Gaia spirits and a Terra steel, huh? I mean, if we don't beat this, we'll just have to beat the regular Gaia spirit like one more time uh, before we fight this guy. But I mean, all right, well, let's just give this guy a shot here. 
Let's see what happens. What's the worst that could happen, right? No. Yeah, we should have what we need in order to make the life aggregator. So let me see here. We needed four Gaia spirits, two end bottles, a uh, dragon stone, which is, how do we get this? Mana diamond inside of a mana portal. Yeah, that's easy day. So this is just gonna be a normal crafting recipe. So we need two of this ender air bottle. You just take empty glass bottle in the end and click on the click on the ground and that's how you get those guys. All right, let's see about this. All right, we have our life aggregator and this guy, what are we missing? We're missing this. No, give that back. Uh, missing the mana steel, I believe. There is our steel. And what was the other thing that we're missing? Ender air bottle and prism marine, dark prism marine. Ooh. I don't know. Do we have everything we need for this? Because we need four of it. Nope. Looks like I got to hit up my deep mob learning. Just needed four of these guys. We can toss the pristine matter back in. There we go. And life imbuer, please. Thank you very much. All right. So we have all of the achievements for this. Um, what the heck? <laughs> we didn't finish this, but uh, apparently we just had to fight. We didn't actually have to win. So what did it, uh, what did it give me here? Resolute Ivy, no clue. Gonna have to figure that out one of these days, but we can toss these guys back in there. And then the other thing is like Batania's version of a, uh, kind of like the integrated dynamics. So this is gonna be a storage system. So you put sparks over different chests and then you can uh, you can access the items from a single, from a single spark. I don't believe that you can actually set this to, uh, like you can't go in, take, put in them type, put in items in and out. I think this is going to be more for, uh, uh, automating certain like crafting recipes or anything like that. But, uh, so we can, we can check that out at a later point in time. I'm just looking for quick things that we can, uh, we don't have another root in the mana. <laughs> So yeah, we can, we can finish up the, the rest of the Batania in the next episode, but yeah, we are going to call it an episode there, guys. We got our way, we got ourselves most of our way through Batania, which I am very pleased with. Uh, again, Batania's, it, it's a, it's a, it's a decently cool mod. It's just not, it's just not my thing. Um, I have different tastes and Batania doesn't necessarily fit those, but it is fairly technical. You can automate it and it can do some pretty neat things. So as always, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It helps me out greatly. And until next time, be safe, stay awesome, and we'll see you guys in the next episode.